Daniel Negreanu is perhaps the most famous poker player in the world, and for good reason. His skills, achievements and remarkable ability to guess and then call out players' hands has earned him a spot among the greatest ever. But who is Daniel Negreanu and what's his story? We're about to find out. First up though, this video is brought to you by us, Easy Poker, the easiest way to play poker with friends, whether you are physically together or playing online from separate locations. Get started now, it's completely free and you'll find the link in the description. Daniel Negreanu was born on July 26, 1974 in Toronto, Canada. His parents, Annie and Constantine, were originally from Romania but moved to North America in the late 1960s as the communist regime took over their country. Now, their original plan was to start their new life in the United States, but due to immigration and financial issues, they ended up in Canada. Daniel has a six-year-older brother named Mike. Mike was tall and strong, something that really helped Daniel, who was the shortest kid in the entire school and had a big mouth. But although he was a small kid, he had big dreams. At the age of just four, he told his mom that he would build her a house out of popsicle sticks and moved to California. The young Daniel was particularly skilled in math, but struggled to stay focused in school. In fact, the principal wrote a letter to Daniel's mom, threatening to expel him because of his poor behavior and habit of ignoring school rules. But Daniel didn't care and didn't plan to finish high school either. Instead, he spent most of his time at the local pool halls, playing pool, poker and just about anything else. He was known as quite the hustler and had an obvious talent for poker. Towards the end of his senior year, Daniel dropped out of high school and started his life as a professional poker player. After dropping out of high school, Daniel became what is known as a rounder. Someone traveling around the state, playing at local charity casinos and looking to take part in illegal games around the bigger cities. He was still just a teenager and played against people twice his own age. On one of his nights out, he played against a striking young woman named Evelyn Ng. The two fell in love and started dating. That romance didn't last, but they would both become professional poker players and stay friends. Daniel was doing well at the local poker tables and had managed to build up a decent bankroll. And now he was ready to leave Toronto and headed to Las Vegas, the gaming capital of the world. However, the strip would chew him up and spit him back out. Daniel was still just a kid and had no idea how to properly manage a bankroll. Before he knew it, he was broke and spent his last money on a plane ticket back to Toronto. But this didn't discourage the young boy. In fact, he was more determined than ever and keen to evolve his skills and rebuild a bankroll. He spent hundreds of hours studying strategies and playing at various casinos in Canada and the US. A little known but extremely fascinating story is that Daniel's family had a dog called Lucky. According to one of his own blog posts, one day while Daniel was taking a shower, the dog died, seemingly out of nowhere. The entire family was heartbroken at the loss of their old friend, especially Daniel who was very close to the little dog. But Negrano found himself unable to show his emotions in any way. By that time, I'd already been playing poker on a daily basis. So, as I was getting better and better at hiding my emotions, I think that ability spilled over to my personal life and had a negative effect on me. So, in other words, Daniel had successfully learned to not let his emotions shine through. That's how good of a poker face he had developed. And things were about to go his way. Nineteen ninety seven proved to be a turning point in Negrano's career. He cashed in no less than three different high profile tournaments, including two games at the World Poker Finals, winning more than fifty thousand dollars. And at the Foxwoods World Poker Open, he was even voted the best all around player at the tournament. Certainly a great achievement by the young man, but things were about to get even sweeter. Just a year later, Daniel entered another big tournament. There were 229 players and the game was Pot Limit Hold'em, a version of poker that Daniel had only tried once or twice before. 
This was a WSOP tournament and Sony Guano was up against some pretty big legends. Players like Johnny Chan, Eric Seidel and Dan Harrington. But the young Daniel quickly found his feet and ended up winning the tournament and a cash prize of $170,000. He was only 23 years old and therefore the youngest player to win a WSOP bracelet ever. For this reason, fans everywhere started calling him Kid Poker, a name that sticks with him to this day. Negrano kept getting better and in 1999 he played his first TV event at the US Poker Championship in Atlantic City. He won that event collecting a big prize of $210,000 and further adding to the momentum of this upcoming poker star. Around this time, Negrano moved back to Las Vegas and kept grinding, but the next couple of years would be hard on him as he tried to prove himself by winning a second bracelet. This finally happened in 2003 as Daniel won the shoe bracelet proving his all around ability and bringing home another $100,000. Finally, he seemed to have solidified his place amongst the greatest. 2004 was perhaps the best year of Negrano's entire poker career. He had no less than 11 caches at big tournaments and won two WPT titles. The two WPT titles alone netted him about $2 million. This was also the year Daniel won his third WSOP bracelet, this time in Limit Hold'em. His total earnings this year was an insane $4.5 million. At this point in time, Negrano had taken more money from tournament poker than anyone else before him. This insane year meant that Daniel Negrano was crowned Player of the Year by WSOP, Card Player Magazine and the WPT. Obviously. After this, Negrano decided to further develop his brand and business by writing a chapter in Doll Brunson's Super System 2 and beginning work on two books of his own. 2006 also had some big caches in store for Negrano. He started off with a win in the WSOP circuit event in Tunica, earning $755,000. Six months later, he finished second in the Tournament of Champions event, adding another $75,000 to his bankroll. To finish up the year, Daniel cashed at five WPT tournaments and wrapped the year with a $700,000 prize for finishing third in the Five Diamond World Poker Classic. By 2007, Kid Poker was no stranger to big caches. He was regularly winning hundreds of thousands of dollars and was ranked among the top poker players such as Phil Ivey and Phil Hillmud. That year, Negrano was offered a big sponsorship deal by Poker Stars. He became the primary face of the company representing the company in multiple videos and at events all around the world. This partnership would go on for another 12 years with Negrano pretty much representing the company on his own. A little known fact is that Negrano was actually close to joining PokerStars way earlier. In one of his blog posts, fellow poker player Steve Badger says that in 2001, Daniel Negrano came to him with a business proposal. A man named Asai Schanberg was creating an online poker site and was looking for investors. Now, Badger invested, but Negrano chose to pass. And of course, that poker site later became PokerStars. In 2008, Daniel added a fourth WSOP bracelet to his collection, as he landed first place at the 2000 Limit Hold'em event, collecting a prize of $200,000. And just a year later, Negrano came close to winning his fifth bracelet when he finished second in the WSUP $10,000 No Limit Hold'em event. 2013 became another amazing year for Daniel Negrano. In fact, this might have been the best year of tournament poker any player has ever had. Daniel kicked off the year on a trip down under winning his fifth bracelet at the WSUP Asia Pacific main event. But this was only a small taste of what to come. Soon thereafter, Negrano reached the final table at the championship events of both the EPT and the WPT before finishing second at the $2,500 limit 2-7 triple draw low ball event at the WSOP in Vegas. As if all that wasn't enough, Negrano capped off the year by winning his sixth bracelet at the WSOP Europe High Roller event. The second bracelet just that year. 
and this meant that Daniel Negreanu was crowned Player of the Year by the WSOP, Bluff Magazine and Car Player Magazine. Again, obviously. But titles and trophies are just two ways to measure success. Money is another. And in 2014, Daniel took home the biggest cash prize of his career. He finished second in the big one for one drop and picked up $8.3 million on his way out, making him the all time leader in tournament earnings. Later that year, he finished fourth in the Aussie Millions Poker Championship, netting an additional $1.1 million. This is also when he was inducted in the Poker Hall of Fame. He had of course been an obvious candidate for years, but because of something called the Chip Reese rule, players had to be at least 40 years of age to get inducted. In more recent years, Negrano has branched out and matured as a businessman. Although he of course still plays poker, nowadays it's mostly online poker. Probably also in part because of the coronavirus shutting down casinos and tournaments. He also has an extremely successful YouTube channel with multiple videos coming out each week. The channel has a total of 50 million views and videos include everything from tutorials to war stories and even a podcast. In 2018, he also teamed up with Masterclass to create a course in poker skills. The Masterclass did really well and paved the way for Daniel's good friend Phil Ivey to launch his own Masterclass the following year. In November of 2019, Negrano once again shocked the poker industry by signing a sponsorship deal with GG Poker. This was quite the story since it happened just six months after Negrano left PokerStars, a company he had pretty much been the face of. But Negrano had landed himself in some hot water with much of the poker community coming down on him for being a PokerStars shill. Now leading this attack on Daniel's character was Doc Polk, another online poker player who also had a massive following online. In 2016, Negrano went on his podcast and argued that PokerStars plan to raise their rake would actually be a good thing for the average player, because it kept pros away. This of course had the entire poker community enraged, as most of the players saw this as an obvious money grab from PokerStars and were mad at Negrano for defending the plan. Dog Poke captured this movement with the ironic slogan More Rake is Better and went straight for Negrano, calling him out in numerous tweets and videos. The whole thing escalated in 2018 when Dog bought a giant billboard outside of a tournament that both he and Negrano would be playing. The billboard said More Rake is Better.com and was an obvious jab at Negrano. The whole thing blew up online and clearly irritated Negrano. Negrano's big mouth had landed him in some hot water before, but Doug Polk's massive online following made this the perfect storm and the whole thing was clearly building to a head to head battle. And in 2020, Negrano once again surprised everyone by accepting a heads up challenge from Doug Polk. They agreed to play 25,000 hands, mostly online, in what became known as the high stakes feud. Months later, Dog Puck was crowned the winner and won a total of $1.2 million. Outside of the poker world, Daniel Negreanu is every bit as interesting and charismatic as you would think. He is an outspoken vegan, often preaching a healthy and balanced lifestyle. He is involved with a number of charities like Ante Up for America, which raises money for the crisis torn region of Darfur. He also founded an annual golf tournament called Big Swing that works with the Lily Claire Foundation to raise money for children in need. Now, Negrano's love life is also quite interesting. Since dating fellow poker player Evelyn Ng back when he was just 16, Daniel has dated a range of girls, often actresses, models and poker personas. Like Shannon Elizabeth, known from the American Pie movies, who is a model slash actress with a well known love for poker and apparently poker legends. Oh yeah, I'm dead. I'm naughty, babe. Yeah. Oh god. In the end though, Daniel found the one in Amanda Leaf the Man, an American actress and former host for Poker Stars. Now, the two had already dated for a brief time back in 2010, 
before she became engaged to Bobby Robinson. But in late 2018, Daniel had a second shot at the one that got away and he still had the ring he bought for her a decade earlier. He proposed to her on the last day of 2018 and she said yes. In May of 2019, the two got hitched at a beautiful wedding at the Toronto Resort in Rancho Palo Verdes, California. The wedding was a regular who's who of the poker world and had the official hashtag A loves the D. No, for real, it actually did. A true poker power couple and a happy ending for kid poker. Daniel Negrano's net worth is believed to be more than $50 million and in 2014, the independent poker ranking system Global Poker Index recognized him as the best poker player of the decade. Daniel Negrano conquered the world of poker while still in his 20s and he did it out of a genuine love for the game. Every time he got knocked down, he would get right back up and keep playing, keep grinding. And now you and your friends can do the same with the Easy Poker app. The app provides both chips, cards and an unlimited amount of games for free. It's a digital version of a physical poker set and perfect for private poker with friends whether you're physically sitting together or playing online from separate locations. The app takes care of everything, so now you and your friends can play a game of social poker anytime, anywhere. Daniel Negrano is arguably the most famous poker player in the world and certainly a charismatic ambassador for the game. But what do you guys think? Is he the greatest ever? And what poker player would you like us to do a video about next? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're down there, consider hitting that like button and maybe subscribe for more poker videos like this one. Thank you.